Hey guys, Bushcraft 412 here. I want to talk about the Mythical 45 ACP. I get more nasty emails about the 45 than I do any other caliber out there. It's for some reason in that class of just mythical things that, that some gun owners just can't let go. And anytime I put out a video that advocates using like a 22 or the 9mm or anything like that, I'm always going to get a dozen private messages from people saying, you're a retard, people should be using 45s, they're the only, you know, that's the only gun that's going to stop people. And you get a bunch of stupid malarkey from just people who hold this round in very, very high esteem, and there's no basis for that. Uh, let's take a look at this round. What we have, 45 ACP, invented in the early 1900s by Mr. John Browning, and it's been used in the military from World War One, pretty much on. And uh, very popular round when it comes to civilian use as well. well. People have been using it for home defense for years and years aside from its military use. Um, but here's where the issue comes in. Your 45 caliber rounds come in different bullet weights measured in grains, anywhere from and if you're new to guns, this is new to you, but if you're not, this is, you know, kind of remedial math, but you're getting bullet grains ranging from 135 up to like 220 for the 45 ACP. Now, if you look at kinetic energy of a round, which is the energy that bullet has when it leaves the gun, you know, we all remember high school uh, physics. Kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. So in order to get more kinetic energy, you have to increase the mass or increase the velocity of the round. Now the, the uh, 45 is a very large projectile. 220 grains is a very big bullet. Um, in fact, if you do, you know, most rifle bullets are not 220 grains. I mean, my 30 6 shoots uh, 180 grain bullets. That's a very large projectile. But because of that projectile being so large, and the case only being able to hold a finite amount of powder, you're looking at a slower velocity. The velocity of this round is more like 800 to 1,000 feet per second, whereas rifles are like 2,000 to 3,000 feet per second. So you lose, even though you have the bigger round, you lose a lot of kinetic energy because it is so slow. Now. Granted, there's all different kinds of ammunition. This here is just a Winchester white box. This is pretty much kind of cheap. You know, it's not the greatest ammo out there. It's one of the cheaper on the market. It's not very expensive. It's definitely not the greatest, but it's, you know, an economical, you know, hollow point bullet. Now, here's my issue. So we have this 45 ACP that shoots a 220 grain bullet at like 900 feet per second. The kinetic energy on that is like 450 foot pounds. Now let's take a look at the nine millimeter. Now I don't want to make this a nine millimeter versus 45 video, but the nine millimeter shoots, you know, 115 grain bullet, which is about half at about 1300. And I say like uh, 1100 to 1300 feet per second. And its muzzle velocity is like 350 to 450. So you're really only looking at about a 15% increase in kinetic energy from the 45 to the 9mm. So how is it this 45 is so much stronger around than 9mm? Well, kinetic energy isn't the end all decision on the stopping power of a round. The stopping power of a round has so many things into it. You're looking at, you know, number one, the weight of the bullet, the kinetic energy, how well the bullet expands, how quick the bullet expands, how much penetration there is, so many things involved in that. And in reality, I would take a good 9mm round, a good, proven, not some new rage, you know, $40 a box, you know, miracle round, but a good, well-proven 
nine millimeter round over these Winchester white boxes any day. A good plus P nine millimeter round can have just as much energy as the 45, no problem. And if a 45 round does not expand properly, and a nine millimeter does, you're gonna have way more stopping power with that nine millimeter that expanded properly. So I really think when it comes to stopping power, it's not the muzzle energy, it's not the size of the bullet, it's how well it expands, how quick does it expand. Now if a bullet doesn't start expanding until it's 10 inches inside you, it's not going to do very good because it's going to go through and leave a small hole through most of your body. On the other hand, a bullet that expands instantly is leaving a huge, horrible wound channel through your body, and plus that spinning motion, you know, all that jagged metal just spinning through your body like a meat grinder. It's horrible. So, what I got to say, and to sum everything up, the 45 ACP is not a miracle round. It's not this one shot kill miracle that people make it out to be. It's a great round. It's a great self defense round, but more important than anything is a good, reliable gun that shoots consistent, consistently accuracy. At, wow, I'm losing it. And that shoots consistently and accurately, whether the gun's clean, dirty, hot, cold, you name it. And number two, a good quality, proven round for the gun. And one of the best ways to do that, don't read the magazines, don't look in advertisements, because when you go and you look at these magazines and they show you the expansion of these bullets, that's an advertisement. They're setting up the most ideal conditions to show you that expansion, not realistic conditions. Go online, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people doing ballistic te tests on all different kinds of ammos. Find one that you think is going to match up with what you want and pick it. You know, whether you have 9mm or 45, or even, you know, using a 38 or 357 Magnum, whatever you choose for your caliber for defense is fine. Make sure you have good ammo. Make sure you're using ammo that's going to expand properly, because in reality, guys, let's face it, a crummy 357 Magnum round is going to have about 650 foot pounds of ammo. And if it doesn't expand, it's going to poke a hole right through you and none of that energy is going to be transferred into your body, or at least a minimal effort is, uh, energy is going to be transferred into your body. A good 38 round with 250 foot pounds of energy that stops and delivers 100% of its energy into your body is going to do more damage. So be smart, look beyond the myth and that 45 is great. You know, not all ammo is equal. Not all guns are equal. Be smart about picking a gun and ammo combo that fits your needs and not just living up to 45 is the greatest thing ever. Because I tell you what, guys, I see a lot of internet gurus out there making videos saying how awesome the 45 is and showing you that you're, they're using full metal jackets for self-defense, you know. <laughs> Look at who you get your info from. Think twice and just remember this stuff, you know, the 45 is maybe 15, 20% more energy than the 9mm. The 9mm is like 20, 30% more energy than the 38, you know. And then, you know, you look at something like the 357. 357's only got 20, maybe 25% more energy than the 45. And if that energy is wasted because you choose bad bullets, what's it matter? The best, you know. The best caliber on earth is no good if you have shitty bullets, so. Think about it, guys. Good guns, good ammo. Make good choices together and, and stop believing in the hype that a forty-five is an instant cure to all your self-defense.